You guys are watching NFL Daily, presented today by Vincero Collective. I'm wearing one of their watches, and you can too. The other watch companies have got insane high-end markups. Not the case with Vincero Collective. Exceptionally crafted and stylish watches at affordable prices. And they're giving you 20% off and free shipping at VinceroCollective.com slash chat. Today's video is all about trade rumors, and we're getting close to the NFL trade deadline. Things getting uh, maybe a little bit wacky. We're going to spend a lot of time on Panthers players since Matt Rule's fired. They're all getting blown up. Nothing on Christian McCaffrey today. It's a separate video that's coming, I promise you, in the very, very near future. Let's begin, though, with maybe one of the more appealing trade options for Carolina or at least for other teams on Carolina's roster, DJ Moore. I can promise you teams will be getting calls on DJ Moore, even though he just signed an extension this offseason. He's 25 years old. He's one of the best young receivers in the NFL, even though this has been a pretty down year so far for the young wideout. Now, a lot of big media doesn't understand how contracts work. They just go, oh, they owe, the new team owes everything. It's not how it works. Allow me to break this down. The Panthers save, if they trade DJ Moore right now, $1.04 million. That's his base salary. It's technically $1.04 divided by 17 times however many games are left. We'll stick with the total base salary because then the math gets super weird. They save basically nothing because the new players to fill the roster, they save nothing. They save $10.42 million next year if they trade him. The new team would owe DJ Moore less than a million dollars for the entire 22, 20, 2022 campaign. Balloons upwards of 20 next year, but you could restructure, bring that cap hit down. It's super easy. What I'm saying is this. Every single team in the NFL can afford DJ Moore, even the cap-strapped New York Giants. Now, DJ Moore this year has not been very good. Uh, 138 yards. He's kind of fallen out of favor, been a bit dicey from that standpoint, but he's got three straight years of 1,000 yards. We've seen what guys like A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams went for in trades, Tyreek Hill. I think the Panthers, if they were to hypothetically trade D.J. Moore, should, should demand a first-round pick because they now would then need to spend a first-round pick on a receiver. You can kind of see why I don't think he gets dealt. If he does, some teams that I think make sense as destinations. The Chicago Bears, let's help, let's help out Justin Fields. The Giants need an actual number one receiver. Imagine Rashad Bateman and DJ Moore with Mark Andrews with the Ravens. Please give Aaron Rodgers a young receiver. Also, 27 other NFL teams should have interest in DJ Moore. Everyone should want him. He's young, and he's super affordable for this year. It makes sense if the Panthers want to sell him. It's also why I don't think they sell him. He's 25 years old. He's young. Even in a rebuild, when you're done rebuilding, he's still in his prime. So I want you to be honest, because I, I think the answer's low. But what is the percent chance you think the Panthers trade away DJ Moore? I'm talking like 5%, if that. But, again, democracy. Sound off in the comments at the pinned comment today. If the ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know what you think the percent chance the Panthers actually trade DJ Moore is. Some other big names for Carolina. I'm sure we'll get Brian Burns questions. He's due for a new deal, so maybe a bit more realistic, but he's also a talented young edge. Again, same as DJ Moore. Derek Brown, J.C. Horn, all these guys fit your rebuilding timeline. Other teams should love them. Panthers would be dumb to trade them away. Some more realistic targets, though, include two receivers, Terrace Marshall, who can barely play and just appears to be out of favor. Maybe the regime change helps him, though. Robbie Anderson, who was a Matt Rule guy, has not those expectations. The contract's kind of bad for the Panthers, but you, oh, affordable in a trade. C.J. Henderson has been dealt once already. Might be asking too much here, but a new regime change could benefit him again. Decent name to consider from that standpoint. I'd say Marshall and Anderson, though, are the feasible names you've heard of, maybe you've heard of, that are worth watching. So what do you think when it comes to the Panthers? Will they go full fire sale mode? Let me know in the comment section why for yes or N for no. Support for today's show comes from Vincero Collective, premium lifestyle brand of San Diego that also makes high quality and affordable sunglasses, not 
just the watch. It's like the one I'm wearing right now. Here's a better photo and look of this awesome watch that I'm rocking today. Stylish, quality, and versatile. Three great words to describe Vincero Collective products. Modern timepieces that upgrade your look and stand the test of time. They go with any outfit, any trend, day in the office, date night out, whatever you're doing, Vincero Collective watches fit. Don't just take my word for it. Over th uh, 30,000 five-star reviews. They've been named GQ's got-to brand for premium, premium lifestyle accessories. They offer a shopping experience you can trust. If you need a return or swap, no problem. Five-year guarantee and 365 free return policy has you guys covered. The discount and the deal is only available, though, for a limited time. So don't wait or it'll be too late. Get 20% off and free shipping site-wide with code chat at VinceroCollective.com slash chat. That's promo code chat at VinceroCollective.com slash chat. I promise you, you'll find something that fits and elevates your style. Shop Vincero today. All right, so those were our Panthers trade candidates. Now for some other ones across the NFL. Nelson Aguilar, first up here. He and Kendrick Bourne both kind of like falling out of favor a little bit. They trade for Devontae Parker. They draft Tyquan Thornton. And it's been Aguilar in particular who seems to be on a downward trend. Uh, 50 snaps in week three was the high. 38, 7. Now his money is a bit of a problem. The $9 million base salary plus a million in game day active roster bonuses. You might got to figure out something that's around $5 million in change depending on when you trade for him, might be a little bit pricey for some teams. Kendrick Bourne also fits. He'd be cheaper with the Patriots, maybe like him more again. It's been a weird re receiver rotation. I blame Joe Judge and Matt Patricia myself. Stick in the AFC East here, Denzel Mims, a very popular name for trade ideas and targets and whatnot. He still remains buried on the, de the Jets' depth chart because they've got Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, Mims is receiver four slash five, and when that receiver doesn't help you on special teams, you're not active on game days. Jets allegedly, I'll emphasize allegedly, wanted a fourth round pick for him. <laughs> Way too much uh, for a guy with only 31 crew grabs. I think he's got talent, upside. I agree with all of that, but if you're not playing for a team that hasn't been very good the past couple years, uh, you're not going to find much value in the trade market. So of these two wide receivers, pick one to trade for. I'm going DM for Denzel Mims myself, but I want to hear from you, the people, in the comments section. DM is Denzel Mims, and A is Nelson Aguilar. Tough to find offensive linemen, but I've got two for you guys today here. Riley Reef has played one snap on offense for the Chicago Bears, has a $3 million total base salary. So again, you're talking 1.5, 1.7-ish million if you trade for him. If you need offensive line help, he played decently last year. The Bears have gone younger other directions. He's their swing right now. If the Bears keep losing football games, selling pieces like Riley Reef and a guy we'll get to later on, stay tuned, does make sense. Isaiah Wynn is also a bit of an, I'll call him interesting trade candidate. 10.41 million base salary. So again, five, six, somewhere in that range, depending on when you trade for him. Left tackle, most of his career at, at, with New England until this year. Now he's a right tackle. Some teams think he's more of a guard. So there is positional flex that teams crave so much. And although the pass block grade's been kind of low this year, the run bucking grade has been great. And the overall is better than most players. That is a starting caliber lineman available on the open market. So you should probably consider trading for them if you're in the dire need of offensive linemen. Bigger name, former first round pick. This is someone that is worth considering. All right, we have passed the 319,000 mark. Thank you all so much for getting there. Now it's about 320 thousand let's get there if you want free videos and live nfl trade deadline coverage hit that big red button and subscribe right now youtube.com slash chat sports tv robert quinn now again a lot of these names are based on the team they have not playing that great in the next couple weeks and losing some games and i'm not sure the bears are there because they got the commanders but hey we'll find out right 
Quinn is affordable contract-wise, $12.8 million salary, three years left on his deal. Hasn't been as productive this year. We also saw him ball out last season. The Bears as a unit have not done a great job getting pressure. Probably not all Quinn's fault from that standpoint. Tough to find premium edges. Quinn could be that guy. Here's Quinn's contract here. $12.9 million in 2022. 14 million in 2023, 13 million in 2024. There's $0 in guaranteed money. All of that, I think, is valuable uh, in terms of not being too expensive from that standpoint. So, Quinn, big name there to keep an eye out for. All right, I want you guys to name a player who you want to see trade. It could be a player you want off your team, could be a player you want on your team from somebody else. But, Please keep it realistic because Aaron Donald's not getting traded. Mahomes is not getting traded. So keep that one in mind, folks, please. Let me know a player you guys want to see traded. All right, the final trade candidate for now. We'll do more of these videos, I promise you. William Jackson, the commander's corner, formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals, got paid big money, has not been very good this year, some real problems. He has a back injury. And I'll emphasize injury because I don't know if it's that injured. Uh, the commanders benched him, then said it was a back, kind of, sort of, from that standpoint. He has a $5 million base salary. Not that, you know, outlandish for a guy that was once one of the premier corners. Now, he's been bad this year. Not as good last season. I don't know how realistic a trade ends up being. But if the commanders lose on Thursday Night Football... It's a prime trade candidate. Not that uh, you know expensive and would certainly fit uh, a lot of team salaries, and they could be an upgrade for some teams. So in a, in a dire corner trade market, Jackson and a change of scenery is a good one to keep an eye out for.